Hello everyone, thank you so much for being here today. Um, the title of my sermon is Justice. Um, it is so good to see everyone and to be at church when it is still light out. And I am pleased to be here in the last week of April and cannot believe how fast this month flew by. This month, we as a church explored the theme of raised glory with celebrating Easter in the beginning of the month of April and the past two weeks being about the disciples coming in contact with Jesus after he is resurrected and what it means to have a resurrected faith. So this week, I wanted to end the month of April by changing the pace of things and talking about a series of events that have really shocked and impacted me. As all of us know, in the past year, we have been struggling through a global pandemic alongside a racial pandemic as people of color in the United States came together to protest the unequal treatment of black people in our country, which was sparked by the unjust killing of George Floyd. Simultaneously, in the past year, Asian American hate crimes rose around 150%. There have been reports of hundreds of Asians and Asian Americans being beaten, lit on fire, and slashed on the streets as people blamed us for COVID. While we as a country have been witnessing these violent actions, what really grabbed the media and our country's attention was the event that happened on March 16 of this year when a 21-year-old shot up three spas and massage parlors in the metropolitan area of Atlanta, killing eight people, six of whom were Asian women. And as many of us know, the police defended the killer, citing that he just had a bad day, while we knew that this killer specifically targeted Asian-owned businesses to dispose of his sexual desires towards Asian women. This event did not happen in a vacuum. Instead, this month, there have been countless news articles, surprisingly every single day, of another Asian elder being violated on the street and more black people dying in the hands of the police. The United States is ridden with a racism issue where certain bodies those that do not fit the white cisgendered straight standards are seen as disposable. The issue of social justice and the fight against racism is important to me as a person of color and as an Asian American. While I have encountered hundreds of racist and racist behavior in my lifetime, it feels different these days as I fear doing Monday tasks like walking down the street or riding the subway alone in fear that someone would attack me. So today I wanted to talk about the idea of justice and how as individual members of MCC Boston, we can help people of color in our lives as they navigate through this very intense time in our country. And to be honest, it has been really difficult for me to talk about racism and race issues because my most salient identity has always been my gay identity. But I felt like God was compelling me to read through texts and talk about justice and how we as a church can collectively think about applying this idea of justice, especially as we witness the continual racism in our country. For today's Bible reading, we read one verse from Amos, where the prophet Amos states, but let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. The prophet Amos is one of the 12 minor prophets in the Old Testament and preached during the time where Israel was split into the Northern Kingdom of Israel and the Southern Kingdom of Judah. Before becoming a prophet, Amos was a sheep herder and sycamore fig farmer Although Amos never really identified as a prophet, as he never had the formal education. While Amos was born in the southern kingdom, 
he preached mostly in the northern kingdom under the reign of Jeroboam II. During this time, the northern kingdom was enjoying a long period of peace and security as they rapidly conquered neighboring lands such as Syria, Moab, and Ammon. But this kingdom was not free from social corruption and oppression as injustice and prejudice became rampant, especially towards the poor. One thing to note is that why the prophet Amos is interest, is interesting is that unlike the other prophets we see in the Bible, he limited his prophecy on the, re, on the redemption and restoration of Israel and Judah. Instead, Amos was interested mostly on the idea of justice and dismantling the unjust systems found in Israel. Amos directed his prophecies against the privileged people of Israel, a people who had no love for their neighbor, who took advantage of others, and who only looked out for their own concerns. Amos prophesied about what the people were doing wrong and the divine judgment that would soon follow. Amos holds God, God's people accountable for their prejudice against, against others. The prophet continually points out the failure of the Israelite people to fully embrace God's idea of justice. Some of the things that the people of Israel were doing were that they were selling off needy people for goods, taking advantage of the helpless, oppressing the poor, and the men were using women immorally. This all sounds familiar to us, right? One of the things that Amos points out in his prophecies were that the people had lost the concept of caring for one another as they did everything they could to gain economic advantages. It's like we're reading the news article today. <laughs> Therefore, Amos rebuked them because he saw in that lifestyle evidence that Israel had forgotten God. Now to get back to our one verse that we read today, what I love about this verse is that I believe here is where we can understand the idea of justice. But let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. One way that we can think about this verse is using theologian Walter Brueggemann's idea of prophetic imagination. The prophetic imagination can be understood in two parts. First, the prophet critiques the dominant consciousness and announces that God is dismantling and destroying every unjust structure, every system of oppression. Then second, the prophet energizes the imagination and announces the new, good, just thing that God is building or planting in its place. The prophetic imagination then can be understood as a tearing down, a dismantling, and only then can there be a building up. This idea of prophetic imagination makes sense for Amos as the prophet is confronting systems of oppression and injustice so massive that Amos' writings are devoted almost entirely to announcing the dismantling of these systems. Again and again, Amos outlines the system of oppression by the people. And then again and again in this book, Amos states the dismantling of these systems. Our verse lies in the middle of the prophet rebuking the actions of the people, and then suddenly he describes a river of justice coming to wipe everything away. Amos in our verse is talking about justice as a way of dismantling an already corrupt system, and then being able to imagine something new and better for us. Prophetic imagination allows us to not only understand this, but also reframes the bigger picture of what is at stake so that we can take in the reality of our moment in a new way with a sense of what might be possible. So while Amos was not talking about racism in their prophecy, when they, are, when they were preaching hundreds of years ago, I hope that we as a church can understand why Amos' verse is important for us today. Martin Luther King Jr. knew this as King added this verse in his iconic speech, um, I Have a Dream. 
Much like how the Israelites were thriving in corruption, which Amos believed to be an indication that they have forgotten God, the United States is continually battling with the disgusting issue of racism and white evangelical Christians especially forget God's greatest commandment to love their neighbor. From Amos, we know that justice can only mean the dismantling of a corrupt system with river of justice and a rebuilding of a new system, one that honors God and God's creation humanely and equally. We witnessed a great example for a need of dismantling a, of a corrupt system as this week, we finally got the verdict of George Floyd's murder after over one year later. Thankfully, um, our country recognized George Flo Floyd's death as a murder. Um, well, this was um, one year too late because as a country, we witnessed a public execution on live television. And while yes, the ruling to charge George Floyd's murder was a big win for social justice, but it does not change the fact that this country was built off of the backs of slaves and people of color. Even as our government official recognized the importance of this trial verdict, during the three-week trial of their, um, Derek Chauvin, news outlets have reported that 100 people were killed by the police across the United States. 100 people were killed by police in just three weeks. People in this country will continue to murder black and other people of color until real systematic change happens. One of the roots of racism is not viewing each person, people with different backgrounds, cultures, skin color, and people who look different than us as equal to us. I believe that this is what allow humans to hit, violate, and murder other people and especially people of color without remorse. We live in a world, in a country, that allows these things to happen, where the people and organizations that are supposed to protect us instead treat us inhum inhumanely and murder us. And while our fight against racism has only just begun, I believe that it is crucial for us as members of MCC to be a church that is committed to social justice to be a part of the river of justice that wipes out these corrupt systems and build up better ones. The history of our church is one that is rooted in social justice, as our founder, Reverend Perry, have committed his life for LGBTQ plus rights, advocating for our inclusion in Christianity and society as a whole. The people that came before us in MCC are able to be the river of justice for LGBTQ plus rights. Now it is our turn as a church to be committed to the fight against racism. Thank you.